So we thought we would name the segment something. So this and all future text editor history segments will be called text ed. First, let's let's talk about E D or Ed. Um, Ed, it's Ed. It's uh, definitely. I'm going to call it Ed from here on out. I'm. Yeah, technically it is E D. So if I say Ed, I'm talking about E D. Just yeah. just so you know. So where we got that from was the GNU Ed page. Um, so I, I I'm just going to describe from their. I'm, I'm going to read their description of Ed. GNU Ed is a line-oriented text editor. It is used to create, display, modify, and otherwise manipulate text files, both interactively and via shell scripts. A restricted version of ED, or RED, can only edit files in the current directory and cannot execute shell commands. ED is the standard, in quotes, text editor, in the sense that it is the original editor for Unix, and thus widely available. For most purposes, however, it is superseded by full-screen editors such as GNU Emacs or GNU Mo. I want to set the scene. So if you rewind a little bit, back to the late 60s, when text yeah. editors were just getting started. I think one of the, I think uh, QED started in like 62 or something like that. But as, this, as more and more folks- This is before Linux. This is really yes. far back. Right. This is at the, the birth of Unix around that time, late 60s. Uh, Peter H. Salas, an author of, uh, or the author of A Quarter Century of Unix and Casting the Net, called Ed- the most user hostile editor ever created. Uh, and one of the reasons was because the question mark symbol is used for way too many things for quitting, uh, also for errors. And there was no, like, if you got an error, you got a question mark and no error message. It just said, huh? So, <laughs> you know, um, and and you got to keep in mind, right, like this is before monitors were a big, like monitors as we know them today are a big sure. thing. Even even the monochrome monitors before oh, yeah. that, you had teletyped prompts and they weren't monitors. I mean, they, they would they would print things like, like for yeah. real. <laughs> yeah, printing, actual printing. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Uh, and the terseness of prompts, right, I mean, them being super short uh, is really a feature and not a bug at this time right now now it's the reverse because we have monitors and they can auto refresh and update and stuff and not having a very descriptive error message is a sign of a bad software it was the reverse back then because you had a whole you know three bytes to do stuff in the the jokes for vi mm -hmm. uh they work they work for ed as well um, you know, the, how do you, how do I, I've, I've opened VI, I'm in VI or Vim. How do I exit? Mm -hmm. the, the answer is like, what, uh, ZZ? Is that the one? And then. Z yeah. Shift. Yeah. The capital ZZ will, will get you out. Or, yeah. you know, you can, you can colon, um, colon Q. Colon Q exclamation point. If yeah. you, if, if you, if you did edits, then you want to do exclamation point. If you don't want to save, if you want to write right. that, then you want to WQ. Right, right, and and Ed's Ed's functions are similarly opaque. So <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So I mean, if you start Ed with a file name in mind already, and this is on more modern machines, I don't know if it behaved this way back in the day, but uh, the very first thing that it gives you is like the output of standard error, which uh, says that it can't find the file that you're referencing. Right. But it is indeed editing a file named that, so you just have to save it. And then the file will then exist. And anyway, opaque is is the word. Manual is needed e for your first few goes. Right. And then if you want to add anything, a lot like Vim, you have to uh, do I and then enter for insert mode or E and then enter for edit mode or C and then enter for change mode. Don't ask me what the difference is between any of them. But you had to press enter after each of those, and then it put you into the mode. Right. And then to exit that mode, 
you do a dot and then enter. And then you're back into like command based mode and not, you know, I'm, I'm adding this to the text file right. mode. And then once you were in that mode, you could hit W and enter to write it and then Q and enter to quit it. And all along the way, you're getting this question mark. And you don't yeah. know if it's an error or not. You have no idea. If it, it could hope, be an error. It might hope, be an error even. You hope it's doing the right thing. You hope. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and so like when you're doing any of these things, remember this is a line editor. This mm -hmm. is not a full screen editor. You're not doing the entire document all at once. Right. It, it's essentially interactive as you like line it, by line by line. It, Inter interactive by line yeah yes there, there was a uh there is a uh like a command for what is essentially like hitting enter in the text file right to go down to the new line you had to use in for new lines new line yeah mm -hmm. to specify that you wanted new lines right so i mean this this is in a far and away magical place that <laughs> i mean we don't we don't understand for the most part anymore you just don't have this kind of interaction with computers anymore right. so yeah like leo says it, it requires a man page to simply get the hello world going you do yeah. you have to what, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very much so so much of ed came from uh qed or quick editor or which was ked i'm just ked? gonna call it ked it might be ked <laughs> it's i not. don't know it's not it's no <laughs> <laughs> um, which was released in 1967. So that was like the predecessor, if you will, um, of even, you know, what we have now. Um, it was one of the first three key elements of the Unix operating system. So you had an assembler, an editor, and a shell. That Those are the three elements that you needed to, to make the Unix operating system. So this was developed by Ken Thompson in August 1969. Uh, Thompson was quite the pioneer in the computer science field, have to say. And together with Dennis Ritchie, they created Unix. I mean, I guess together. I mean, there was yeah. probably uh, there was other people too involved, but they were the primary people that were, were creating this stuff. Um, and if something didn't exist in the early days, you had to write it. Thompson did that like several times over throughout the course of his career. He wrote B, which was the precursor to C language. Um, and we still can't get rid of it. We still can't. Everybody wants to. Google just came out with carbon. Yeah. I mean, really, you're going to name C it the most generic thing in the whole world. So not even Google can Google carbon. Nice. Yeah. Nice one, Google. Um, and so C is, you know, very ubiquitous at this point still, very much so. And in fact, he used C to write Ed. So Ed is written in C. In addition to that, he's also more recently a co-developer for the Go language. And so if you were wondering why I was taking shots at Google, yeah, that's it. This is yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And so um, there it is. Like, so those are some big things. He also wrote several other text based tools, things like grep, DD, uh, unique, among others that are still very popular in current times for Unix and Linux administration. I, li I like that you picked those three examples because I still use those three examples all the time. I know, and and you're not alone because they are very, very, very popular for administrators. Yes, um, yeah. I I don't I don't. If you're a serious uh, Linux admin, you're probably you're probably y you need to know those. Yeah, just do. Um. So the initial release of Ed was in 1973, which is interesting. Because it was after, you know, after he'd kind of wrote it or developed on it, um, it got released in 1973. Uh, official, officially released. I, right, I think, yeah. I, I'm sure they were using it on the back end quite a bit. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Even though monitors that would refresh on their own were more common in the 70s, AT&T happily used Tektronix 
4014s, which meant interactive text wasn't going to happen in Ed. So the the reason I put this in there is because the Tektronics 4014s, they they weren't auto refreshing on the screen like you had to request a refresh on the screen so um the interactive text editing that we expect today is you know you type a letter you see a letter you type a letter you see a letter well that's not how it worked back then and because AT- AT&T spent lots of money <laughs> getting these monitors in front of their employees that just meant that the people that worked on Ed who were employees of AT&T didn't care about that auto refreshing auto updating and that ended up falling to the successors of ed like vi and emacs which were both released in 1976 and others obviously there's more than just those two right. uh, but surprisingly some of ed's code live lives on in, oh, for sure in all of these projects so ed was the seed that VI grew from, and Emacs, not trying to start a war yet. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there, though. <laughs> so, also, in addition to that, uh, the early MUDs, or multi-user dungeons, uh, from the 70s and 80s would also use an Ed-like syntax. Yeah, and so I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine having to remember lots of key combinations not combinations i guess like like just what each key does to remember how to play a game but you know i guess it's not that different well and and so because it's not as interactive like knowing where you are and what you're doing like that's just not being able to keep track of, you have to keep track of it in your head right where, yeah where well, you're at. it's very D D like D- dungeons and right. dragons you, you have to know where you are in the game and know <laughs> how you can move, where other things are. It's very imagination-based, and so were MUDs. Uh, you, you really did have to keep track. I mean, or just write down notes, which is also what you do in Dungeons & Dragons, right? Well, I mean, for sure, yeah, absolutely. you got to remember somehow, and you can't keep it all in that noggin of yours, so writing it down was a huge help. So I suppose you probably had written down all of the keystrokes that you needed to know to be able to move around and do stuff. So... Yeah, very interesting stuff. 1980, uh, a re-implementation of Ed is called Edlin. I'm, I'm going to call it that. See, uh, now here's why, <laughs> why I think it's Ed, because I don't think you, call, you, would, you would like say Edlin as E-D Lin or E-D-L-I-N, but maybe you did. Maybe you did. And I'm just the one guy that just refuses to stop calling it Ed. So, I, I, you know, it's it's short for edit line, right? Um, so, yeah. Right. But that, that's made for 86 DOS, also known as QDOS or uh, Quick and Dirty OS. You know, that's when that was born in the 1980. Uh, at the end of 1980 in December, Microsoft purchased a non-exclusive license to 86 DOS. Then in July of 1981, purchased everything outright. Edlin was included from version 1.0 to version 5.0 in MS-DOS. Yeah, I think, that, I think the MS-DOS versioning stopped at 6-ish, something yep. like that. So yep. in, the, in the most later, in, in, the, in the latest versions of DOS, you no longer get Edlin. And that's, uh, hmm, hmm, they left it behind. That's a still a long history, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, Ed itself... It's still kind of in use, right? If you think of VI and Emacs as the 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 real successors, even code oh, included sure. uh, to Ed. But yeah, when whenever 5.0 was released, uh, I should, probably should have looked that up. Um, that's that's the last time I guess the direct successor of Ed was was really used that I could find. I want to say that was late '80s, early '90s ish. Um, when, when that was available, um, I do remember six and that was like a big difference. Um, so, and, and, you know, like windows was out at, you know, three, one was out by then right. too. So that was also why there was a big jump in things. You can still try ed today. You can on your Linux machine. 
uh, just about any Linux machine, actually. Uh, Ubuntu 2204 definitely has it. And I checked on my Endeavor OS install, which we're trying out for the month. Um, that also has it. So Arch, and I'm sure just about every other distribution as well. Pretty much. Yep, uh, I did. So as we started digging into to to Ed and you know where it started and everything, that was one of the very first things that I wanted to do was, well, can I try it? How yeah, bad wanna... could it possibly be, <laughs> right? Like, it's got to be super simple. You can't add a whole lot to it. We're talking the, the whole program's got to be like, I mean a kilobyte or something right i mean it, it cannot be large where it's storage tiny. yeah storage <laughs> was non-existent back then for for yep. the for the majority of stuff so and it is i mean it's very simple there's really not a whole lot to it you do have to remember individual letter commands but very much like you do in vi and vim today so it's not really that far removed the the big difference right is that VI and Vim, you can do multiple lines. You can go you know, from top to the bottom of a document right. easily. You can kind of do that in Ed, but it's way more difficult, and it's very command line driven. Uh, well, command driven. Right. And uh, the hardest part is like deleting stuff um, or replacing stuff. You pretty much just have to understand how sed works. Which is is also one of those tools that you know kind of was born from the actual editor, right? So right, yeah, right, and we use it again. We we use said a lot yep. today, mm -hmm. and it had its birth around this time as well. The, a big takeaway though here is that regular expressions, um, they were very popular then. Yes, and if you didn't you didn't know how to work. With regular expressions back then, um, you were not efficient. And that's still somewhat true today, I will say. Right. Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, you have to at least be able to sort of demystify the simple regex to just get around. There's so much regex all over the place, just you know, mm -hmm. cutting things down or making it nice. That efficient. You, you I'll call to. it efficient. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's, that's a takeaway. Uh, it's it's amazing to me the fundamentals that um, came out of those early pioneer days still hold true. And I will say, um, I did I did some digging while we were talking, and Ed Edlin would have died between June of nineteen ninety one and March of nineteen ninety three okay. when Microsoft would have released MS DOS six dot all right, so I wasn't too far off. I was a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Edlin made it to the early '90s. It 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 reached into a whole another decade before it was interesting. And one last little thing that I'll add here is, Leo, you found this video uh, by Tech Tinkering um, that shows the proper use of Ed if you don't want to go try it out for yourself and read the man page. That's, you can, that's you the can, thing. You can watch this. Yeah, yeah, because it took me just a little while. I mean, it took me, I don't know, it probably took me about 20, 30 minutes to really kind of get my bearings in Ed <laughs> so that I could save a line properly right? And, and start a new line to add to the existing, like, because I, I, was, I was going back and forth, and I'm like, why didn't it save my stuff? Well, I didn't type it right. Because I wasn't in insert mode, so it was never mm -hmm. actually taken. Yeah, so as as much <sighs> as I hated learning VI, um, at least Ed you got a little is, feedback there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like big red in the bottom and stuff. Um, <laughs> so yeah, huh, huh. Anyway, that tech tinkering video shows you what I suspect pretty much everybody was doing back in the seventies when they were using Ed. So go check that out. That one's actually kind of nice. Um, and it, yeah, gives you gives you what you need to know. Well, I mean, all of that was much more efficient than the actual, you know, the alternative, which was having a deck of cards that you stuffed into a machine. <laughs> so, you know, you want to edit something, you change the card, right? The, yeah, exactly. That, you didn't have those functions, so you were, this, yeah, this, you were punching. This was this was nice. This was really nice. <laughs> 